So I saw this article last week and I've, I've been meaning to, I've, I've really wanted to talk about this because it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you see why I'm not a fucking Democrat? <laughs> you see why I don't espouse to either of the two corporate parties? Cause they're both full of shit. Uh, so Pelosi, it, it recently came out, Glenn Greenwald wrote an, an, an ex excellent piece on his Substack stack uh, that uh, Pelosi's wealth, her enormous wealth, she's a hundred millionaire, is connected to big tech. Uh, go figure, right? In 2004, she uh, she made $41 million. She was worth $41 million, right? And now, as of today, she is she she makes $115 million dollars so like well over double her her wealth in in um what is that 15 years right <clears throat> that's that's a lot she's uh she's apparently apparently the the sixth richest congressperson uh and then you got to think like well you know if if you're um if you're if you're somebody that is representing the people how can you relate to them if you are making astronomically more than them? $115 million means that you don't know what it's like to, um, you know, to, to have your car repossessed, for example. <laughs> you don't have, uh, you don't really know what it's like to lose your home to lose your job and not know where your income is going to come from for a little while, whether you're going to be able to afford food or pay your rent, whether, you know, you can get your kids the books that they need, the school supplies they need. You don't know that struggle. So how can you legislate uh, with compassion, with understanding, if you don't know what the people are going through? Or the consequences of your of your legislations, right? That's the other thing I don't think she really knows. I don't think she really knows the consequences of her legislation either. Like, she'll write and pass p bills. Like, last year she was, like, upholding COBRA. Oh, COBRA, Cobra is going to be great. When it's like, no, COBRA is pretty fucking terrible. And what we need, uh, especially during a pandemic, we need, you know, Medicare, universal health care in general. But especially during a pandemic, I think people need universal health care, um, you know, to make sure that they're not, they they can they can get checked up when they need to. They can make an appointment with a doctor and walk out of there without a without an astronomical bill. So that's that's some stuff that that you can't really relate to. How can you relate to losing your health care when you've never had to lose your health care? You know, I'm not saying that Congress people should live in poverty. Uh, but they should know what that's like if they're gonna if they're gonna legislate within a capitalist system, and they're gonna claim that they legislate out of love and out of compassion. No, uh, advocating for Cobra and 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 turning down a universal basic income and turning down universal health care is not legislating out of compassion. And moreover than that, um, so they found out that you know the the Glenn Greenwald article. Uh, basically exposes the fact that 75% of what she makes comes from the tech industry. Uh, we're talking Apple, we're talking Google, we're talking Amazon, Facebook, and Microsoft. Uh, so all of those are where she's getting three quarters of that $115 million. These are, these are stocks that she's uh, bought and sold, uh, which that automatically should be fishy why are why are politicians investing in wall street which is supposed to be an industry that they are supposed to write legislation to 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 regulate right like why are they participating in the stock market they are supposed to be public servants who are supposed to legislate on behalf of the people and they are invested in in a game and that's what it is it's a ponzi scheme that's what wall street and wall street is uh, they're invested in a game where if they let it run amok and if they let the companies that also play this game kind of run amok, they themselves will become wealthier and richer. Why are they allowed to do that? That's the question we should immediately ask. Furthermore, it should, it should clear up as to why I don't do these live streams on YouTube anymore. And the reason for that is because of major censorship. Uh, so, you know, 
if you look at any videos that have been critical about the Democratic Party uh, and, um, you know, the victory of Joe Biden, for example, or if you call out election uh, fraud, if you call out election fraud or uh, voter disenfranchisement, your videos disappear and you get a strike on your channel or your channel will disappear because you're talking about this stuff too much. Well, the leader of the Democrats in, in Congress uh, is very, very closely tied to one of the companies that controls YouTube, Google. So Google Google is the parent company of, of YouTube. The, the queen of the Democrats is, you know, does does well, gains more wealth when Google does better. If Google takes a hit, that's not so good. So let's protect our interests and let's put these new vague rules in that will shut down anybody that criticizes the party so the party can look really good. They can pass legislation that helps Google. Continue. You see the cycle? No one's, able, no one's allowed to criticize. This is how money becomes authoritarianism. This is how the stock market leads to authoritarianism. Speech control. You don't have free speech when big tech says you can't talk about certain topics. Lefties were calling out election fraud, voter disenfranchisement for years. Uh, but all of a sudden, you know, Trump, they, they need to push the Russia narrative and all that kind of shit. And all of a sudden, you can't say that there's voter disenfranchisement. You can't point out the, the uh, 200,000 black people that were thrown off the rolls in Georgia. You can't point out the, the, the problems within the American electoral system. You can't point out the fact that we can't verify our votes. All of a sudden, that's not allowed to talk. You can't talk about that on YouTube or Facebook. Gee, I wonder why. Could it have something to do with the fact that, you know, the person that controls the Democratic Party within Congress and sits on a bunch of committees that are supposed to regulate these companies is making money off of them. It's in her best interest to let them run amok and control any sort of the any sort of narratives that that might speak ill of the Democrats. Same thing. This is why Democrats are also anti-union because Amazon is anti-union. And unionization might look bad on Amazon, which means their stock might go down. Because Jeff Bezos isn't the king of Amazon anymore. I bet Nancy Pelosi was fucking thrilled with his dong-shaped rocket. And that rocket does look like a penis. There's no argument about that at all. There's no argument about that. And of course, Bezos sat right in the tip. But I bet she was thrilled that that happened. Super excited. Oh, man, this makes Amazon look really good. I bet their stocks will go way up. Why? Why are you investing in this? You're supposed to be you're supposed to be legislating on behalf of the people. And these are companies that are hurting the people. Amazon is one of the worst companies to work for. People in that company have uh, died. There's there's actually a story that came out today about somebody committing suicide at one of their factories uh, and w warehouses. You know, why are you supporting this company? Why aren't, why aren't you, if the Democrats really are a party that champions the people, why aren't they out there supporting labor strikes? That's what they should do. But if you know the history of the Democrats, they don't do that. The Democrats have always been a party for private industry. That's how they started. That was their bread and butter from the beginning. And then somewhere, you know, through the the waves of propaganda that have come across American history, people started thinking that they were the good guys. P probably because the Republicans were just so outwardly like cartoonish villain. You know, like if the Republicans weren't like, I'd like to pass a bill that allows us to tie up pretty women to railroad tracks and wear capes and have twirly mustaches. I'd like to write, like, if they weren't trying to pass bills like that. And also, I would like black people to be stopped, considered to be people. We are the Republican Party. Like, if they would stop being cartoonishly evil, you know, people would be able to see the Democrats for what they are. But the, the Republicans are just, like, they're insane. They're just, 
And I mean, the Democrats are re kind of responsible for pushing the party even further to the right than it already was. That's what Joe Biden and, and the Clintons did uh, with the Democratic Party by being tough on crime or as Kamala Harris says, smart on crime by putting single moms in prison for truancy problems. Uh, they they wanted to prove that they were tougher than the Republicans. And so they created the prison industrial complex. They created a mass incarceration. They created all these problems. And and the and the Republicans had to go, well, well, fuck. If if they're if these Democrats are gonna do the exact same thing we are, and they're gonna use the same scare tactics and propaganda that we are, we're gonna lose our base to them because they seem kind of nice. We're, you know, people are gonna start Republicans are gonna start voting for Democrats now. So they had to out they had to go further to the right in order to be like we are look we're more right wing than they are microsoft controlled by bill gates this is why the democrats aren't you know releasing the patents so that uh, other countries around the world that desperately need the vaccine can get it get it can make it and distribute it amongst your people these vaccines are supposed to be life-saving and and stop the spread of this pandemic Shouldn't you want to get this out? But again, it goes into the narrative of like the pandemic is over now. Don't worry about the variants. It's over now. And it's like, what? The rest of the world is still dealing with this shit. Why are why is it America? If America the, the, the big claim for America is that, oh, we use the military to help people, then do that. Right now, you can do that. You can be the distributor of so many vaccines across the world. You can release those patents and help so many fucking countries across the world. You could lift the embargo on Cuba, who has two vaccines that work very well against the variants and help out a whole bunch of people across the world. But you won't. Because, because then Nancy Pelosi might lose money from her Microsoft stocks. It's expensive, Bill Gates said. Now, Pelosi claims that she's very lucky because she bought and sold at the right time. Um, it's, that's a little fishy. I mean, we, we, a couple of people got caught, and I think Pelosi's a little bit smarter than this. Uh, you know, uh, Richard Burr, Dan, D D uh, Dianne Feinstein, and a missing one from Georgia, Loeffler, I think. Uh, was it Amber or Amanda Loeffler? I'm, 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 She's a Georgia congressperson. And uh, they dumped stocks in industries they knew weren't going to do well because of the COVID shutdown. They, that's insider trading. That's illegal. Um, and, you know, her statement of saying, oh, well, I've just been lucky is like super fucking suspect. Super fucking suspect. And people should be like, oh, it's weird. It's weird that every single time you bought or sold, you've made a shit ton of money. That's kind of strange. Now, this is how close she is tied to to the, the, the to big tech, right? Before voting on an antitrust tech law, right? That would that it's basically trying to prevent monopolies, which is exactly what these companies are. And I'll, we'll go over we'll go over how because I'm sure people are like, oh, monopolies don't exist in America. Remember, we learned that in school. That's how capitalism regulates itself: checks and balances, baby. That's no. Uh, that's not at all. It's it's not. See, that's the thing. Is like this compassionate capitalism only exists in theory. In reality, capitalism is a brutal, ruthless system that fucks everybody over, except for the few that are already rich. But she so before they voted on this antitrust law that would affect big tech, you know, in a in a very negative way. Would it would it, it would kind of restrict them. Tim Cook, Apple CEO Tim Cook, called Nancy Pelosi to have a conversation about this. That immediately, you know, and, and Greenwald points this, points this out, is that immediately should be a red flag of, wait a minute, what the fuck? Why does somebody like Tim Cook have Nancy Pelosi's direct line? Why can he have an immediate conversation? I can't have an immediate conversation with Nancy Pelosi or, or any of any of the, the Congress people that represent me. 
I can't just dial the fucking mayor's office and be like, hey, dude, it's Chris. What's up, dog? We got some potholes we need to fix. Where are you at on this? We can't. I can't do that. Can anybody call any of their Congress people directly? I mean, that's the thing that people say. Call your Congress people. Call your Congress people. T Tim Cook, and I would I would also wager to bet uh, fucking Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates. I don't remember who the CEO of Google is, but I bet they all have direct lines. Mark Zuckerberg probably has a direct line. Mark Zuckerberg probably goes over to Nancy Pelosi's house and, and eats ice cream with her as, as poor kids uh, across America can't afford their lunches. Their job is not to create more monopolies, right? Remember, remember back in, I want to say November or December of last year, uh, when Nancy Pelosi freaked the fuck out on Wolf Blitzer, where she fucking lied. It was such a, it's so funny. It's, it's literally one of the funniest clips I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but like Wolf Blitzer was like, Hey, this, like, you guys aren't really looking to help a lot of people with this new stimulus bill that you guys got going on. Uh, and she starts freaking out and she goes, we feed people, we feed people, Wolf, Wolf, Wait, wolf, we f look, wolf, wolf, we feed people. And it's like, no, you no, you don't. We represent, they voted to for us to represent. You don't do that though. In in a in a system run by capitalism, let's let's just put this out there. In a system run by capitalism where money dominates the political, you know, political sphere, there are no politicians that represent the average working class people. They can't because they're not working for you. They're working to uplift a system that wants to crush you. Her claim of uh, her feeding people is, my God, what an oligarchical fucking statement. You're not feeding people. If you were, there wouldn't be food lines going for miles back people wouldn't be getting evicted out of their homes right now homeless encampments wouldn't be attacked this is an economic i mean this, this is an economic divide that you're manufacturing so people like jeff bezos can get ultra rich and take fucking joy rides to space that's how fucking out of touch and bored these people are. They're just like, meh, the planet bores me. I shall take this to space. Build me a rocket in the exact image of my genitals. But clearly make it larger because we have to fit people inside my genitals. That's, that's. What a fucking, what, what I mean, if, if, if nothing that exposes capitalism for what it is, right? There's a bunch of assholes that are standing for Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and fucking, what's that Virgin Airlines uh, guy, uh, Branson, okay? They're like championing that they all get to, they're all going to space because they're like, maybe we'll get to Star Trek. Really? really? You want to get to space communism via the capitalists going to space. That's how you want the aliens to meet us? You want the aliens to meet us and then for them to go, how much money do you have? We'll let you come onto the planet if you give us some money because that's what they're going to do. And then the aliens will wage war on, on the planet because we insulted them because they're a culture that uh, that values intelligence, that values progress, that values equality. And they'll see us and they'll see Jeff Bezos trying to fucking trying to earn a little extra to let some aliens land on this planet and boom. That's how we get what happened on Independence Day. I wouldn't be surprised if that's why those aliens came to Earth. Is because some fucking asshole billionaire went to space, pissed off these aliens, and they're like, fucking, well, let's get rid of these hairless primates. They're wrecking their planet anyway. It'll fucking reset. Their job is to break up monopolies like Amazon, okay? Which which is a, has a... a, a, a um, is a web host. They're a retail site. They now have groceries because he's acquired uh, uh, Whole Foods. 
they're undercutting their own. I mean, they're undercutting people that are on their website by creating products. And so now they're manufacturers as well. They're a delivery service. Yeah. Amazon has its own fleet of planes and trucks. They don't use the postal service. They're, they're, they're partaking in delivery. In fact, I get, um, you know, I, I've, I've had to purchase a couple things tech related. Uh, like I have my Bluetooth headphones and this, uh, pop filter, uh, you know, a couple of the, uh, like USB-C extenders and, uh, and I use a website called new egg cause I didn't want to go on Amazon. Well, it turns out I can't fucking escape it, man, because they use Amazon's delivery service. <laughs> yeah. It gets wrapped in a fucking Amazon thing. And I was like, what the fuck? I'm coming to you guys to get the fuck away from this guy. But that's that's how they. It's, I mean, that's a monopoly. Even different websites can't get away from these guys. Google, Google has YouTube. They're an email service. They're a search engine. Uh, they're trying. They they made vir glasses, virtual reality. They're trying to make a car. So is Apple. They also have web hosting. I mean, they're taking over various aspects of the internet. Apple has. I'm. I'm you know, I use a MacBook Pro. I have an iPhone. That's a computer. Phone, tablet, screens. They're also getting into making cars, apparently. I had a friend of mine that told me that. I was like, that's just fucking dumb. Uh, the music, uh, you know, they have a, they're, they're a music distributor. They're a podcast distributor. They're an entertainment service, Apple TV. I mean, they started out as a company that made computers. Microsoft, why is Bill Gates, the biggest question you should, everybody should be asking is why is Bill Gates in, uh, involved in the medical industry? That's, that's, you, you're a fucking, you're a computer guy. Go, get the fuck out of the medical industry. You can partner with the medical industry, but you're in, you're in it. These are monopolies. These should be broken up. These should not be allowed to exist. They are too big. Again, in schools, you learn that hey, America doesn't have monopolies, and and which is a, which is a blatant fucking lie. This is a legal bribery exists in our system. Nancy Pelosi has stocks in these companies. The legislation and laws she passes and writes will help these companies. People that get paid either during campaigning or when they get into office and they continue to purchase stocks from these companies that they can later sell and make, you know, bajillions of dollars. That should not be how a system that is run by a government system that's run by capitalism will have legal bribery because it needs it to survive. That's the reality. There, there's no, there's no arguing that. This is why politicians don't represent the people. And for anybody that comes out and says that to you, just that's, I mean, at this point, it's just like laughable when people are like, well, politicians represent us. No, they don't. No, they don't. They represent corporations. They represent private industry. They represent capitalism they represent an economic system that wants to fucking kill you let's look at your comments uh lynn hey it's very good to see you i haven't seen you in a little while hope you're still hanging out in the stream uh lynn says we're like the ferengi yeah i wonder i wonder if that's what we are you know there's the like that's 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 our next evolutionary step is not uh, it, it is not transcendence is not is not the glory of space communism that is Star Trek in and of itself. It's we become the Ferengi. We we don't join the Federation and we're all about money, uh, and and we're kind of loathed across the across the galaxy because nobody wants to fucking deal with us. You know, like <laughs> that show does do a really good job of being like this is what capitalists look like. <laughs> And I mean, if you look at Jeff Bezos, he's almost there. The ears are large. You know, all he needs is a bigger brow and forehead. They only think about sex. The man built a rocket that looks like a dong. Come on. Come on.
pop over to Rockfin. Cynical Girl, welcome. Uh, Cynical Girl says, take a drive through her district in San Francisco. It's a horror show. She doesn't give a fuck. Uh, the, the stock market, I call it the global casino. Yeah, I, uh, I have, San Francisco is rough, man. It is, it is, uh, it is, it is rough to be in. And, you know, it is set in this backdrop of this very, like driving in, you just see these fucking mansions and it is just, oh, heartbreaking to walk through that town. Heartbreaking to walk through that town. Uh, yeah, as as CG points out, look at look at her own district and tell me how many people she feeds. She has two fucking fridges full of ice cream, and uh, and there are people in her uh, in in her hometown in the, the city that she resides in that don't have a roof over their heads. You know that are that a a school teacher or a cop cannot afford to live in San Francisco on a full time and full full time employment basis. Uh, CG says, I remember hearing that shit when I hadn't eaten in two days and missed the food distribution at the food bank. Yeah. Yeah. Her, her ice cream thing was horrifying to watch. And that's, I mean, and, and look, that's, that's what has happened to comedians that wind up on the mainstream. This is another fucking essay I want to write is just the, the, the corporate absorption of comedians of an art form that is meant to 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 challenge power and to hold a mirror up to society and you have people like james corden on late night television fucking you know propping up people in power oh what a fucking disgusting segment what a disgusting segment uh i did a whole thing on it did a whole thing on it Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it. And, uh, and you guys help keep this, uh, keep, keep this, this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.